Later today, the US Supreme Court will step into uncharted legal waters. The court's nine judges will consider whether Donald Trump should be barred from running for president. It follows Trump's appeal against a decision in the state of Colorado to stop him running there because of his role in the U.S. Capitol riots three years ago. Yinka Oyatade has the report. Hopeful spectators camp outside the Supreme Court for a chance to sit in on one of the U.S.'s biggest presidential election cases. The nation's highest court is set to decide on whether the state of Colorado is right to bar former President Donald Trump from the 2024 ballot. This is a landmark decision, and I want to be in the room where it happens, to quote Hamilton. The fate of Trump's bid to return to the White House now hangs in the balance as justices gear up to hear arguments Thursday in an appeal made by Trump against Colorado's decision to keep him out of the presidential primary ballot. This for his role in the January 6th riot. Colorado's Supreme Court says he's ineligible under the 14th Amendment, which prevents those who engage in insurrection from holding office. Trump's lawyers say that part of the Constitution was not meant to apply to the president, but instead that it concerns so-called officers of the United States. Trump is making this very technical argument that the president is not an officer of the United States. And therefore, um, he, Trump, could not be subject to disqualification. It's an argument that really would apply to, only to Trump because it applies to someone if they were a senator or a district attorney or had other jobs. And every president uh, from after George Washington on until Trump had had one of those other jobs. Experts say Colorado's ruling is unlikely to be upheld in the Supreme Court, where three of the nine justices were nominated by Trump when he was in office. A decision in Colorado's favor could tempt other states to bar him from the ballot as well, further complicating Trump's path to the White House that has already been dogged by several legal battles. For the first time, global warming has exceeded 1.5 degrees Celsius across an entire year. That is according to the EU's climate service, Copernicus. Scientists have called the development a warning to humanity. To tell us a bit more, I'm very pleased to be joined live now by Vincent Henri Persch, who's the director of the Atmosphere Monitoring Service at Copernicus. Welcome to you, sir. Thanks for finding the time to talk to us. Yes. Could you just tell us, first of all, how Copernicus reached this conclusion that the 1.5 degree cent centigrade threshold had been breached last year? Yes, at Copernicus, and the, we uh, use uh, observations from satellite, from non-satellite, which we combine with models to provide a picture of the uh, evolution of temperatures, but also a, a lot of other parameters of the Earth system. So we are in, in a good place, actually, to, uh, to monitor very closely how uh, different parameters evolve, and particularly air temperature or sea surface temperature, and this is the basis that we use for uh, uh, for, for, for being able uh, early each month to talk about the, the past uh, the past months. Were you surprised when you heard that indeed there had been this breach or not at all? Uh, I would say uh, not really. Uh, it's uh, So it's the eight months in a row uh, that is uh, the highest uh, months on record, so January compared to January's in, 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 in the past. So we are in uh, a series of months that are, that are extremely high in temperature. Uh, and uh, the, it, it's not a surprise. Uh, the IPCC already a few years ago in a special report indicated that they, there was a chance to have high, <clears throat> high uh, hot years, uh, more than 1.5 degrees above the pre-industrial reference. And that's what we, that's what we observe. Uh, in, in January, if we look at the period from February 2023 to, to the end of January, we are uh, more than 1.5 degree, 1.52 exactly uh, above the uh, pre-industrial uh, value. So it's not it's not a surprise. We also understand uh, the driving force be, behind this uh, hot temperature, which are primarily the emissions of uh, greenhouse gases by human activities. Indeed, and it is worth emphasising that this uh, year-long breach doesn't actually break the Paris 2015 agreement for the moment because that would be a rise of 1.5 degrees Celsius over several years. But 
Look, how serious really is today? Is there still time, do you think, to stop a permanent breach of that limit? Yes, as you rightly say, uh, it's not a breach of the objective of the Paris Agreement. Uh, it would need to be uh, exceeded on a climatological basis, so several decades uh, to, uh, to to be in, in breach. At the same time, uh, we know that the solution to this issue uh, are uh, unfortunately in very few numbers. The, the key thing to do is to cut down greenhouse gas emissions, particularly of uh, CO2 and methane. And unfortunately, the, uh, the world is not yet uh, on a trend to have uh, zero emission, uh, which is what would be needed to start to stop this, uh, this process and, and, and eventually to, to revert. Quite the contrary, uh, global emissions have, are still uh, are stable or slightly increasing as a result of certain parts of the world still emitting uh, even more uh, emissions of greenhouse gases and other trying to cut them back. But uh, we, unfortunately, without a, a very strong action on cutting these emissions, uh, there is no hope that the situation could uh, improve uh, in, in the next decades. Can you paint a picture for us of what this planet will look like, let's say, in the next two years, if this limit, the 1.5 limit, is breached for the next two years? So nothing dramatic would immediately happen. Uh, I, I would say that this limit of 1.5 degree is, is, is a limit that has been set uh, considering also what we call climate tipping points. So the uh, the uh, in principle uh, the uh, if if we cut down emissions of greenhouse gases to zero, the situation of the temperature uh, increase and climate change in general could be reversed. However, there are certain uh, aspects in the climate system which we call tipping points. So these relate uh, relate, for instance, to ice sheets, to uh, uh, large forests like the Amazon, uh, large uh, weather features like the West African monsoon or a big uh, circulation in the ocean, that could be changed forever. So the uh, 1.5 degree is, is uh, uh, thought to be uh, a limit uh, above which uh, some of these tipping points could be uh, exceeded. And actually, it's a really uncharted territory. So uh, it's, uh, it's, it, it, it can seem something uh, quite anecdotal, being 1.5, 1.6, or 1.4, but it is not. Uh, because we we don't know the scientific community doesn't know if uh, we we would be in a, in a situation where the change of climate could be irreversible. I want to thank you, sir, very much indeed for your time. You've been listening there to Vincent Henri Per. She's the director of the Atmosphere Monitoring Service at Copernicus. Thank you very much.